Our Avalanche podcast, day three of training camp. Are we calling this the last day of training camp? Yeah, I mean. Technically, they train in camp all preseason, really. Yeah, they, it's weird that they call these three days training camp and the rest of it is just preseason. Yeah, I, there's plenty more practices that look just like these. It's all the same. <laughs> but preseason game one is tomorrow. So technically the last day of training camp here in Colorado. We talked to Ross Colton today. We'll get to that a little bit later. Uh Anything that stood out immediately to you guys today off the top? No? You guys want me to start this? Go. Oh, Lord. Okay. I want to talk about that third line just a little oh, bit. Here we you go. Know, what we think is going to be the third line, what is like listed as the third line right now of Miles Wood, Ross Cold, and Tomas Tatar. I have felt like they've had a weird chemistry so far through three days where individuals, I thought, have looked good at different times. But as a mixture, the three of them, it doesn't feel like you compare it to even even Nachushkin and and Lekkinen with Riley Tufty in the middle, kind of pop today after kind of a not great day Nichushkin yesterday. Nachushkin was going off today. Oh my gosh, dude! That he looks different. <laughs> um, and and like you you saw Ryan Johansson. Yeah, Jonathan Duran and Miko Rand, like those on fire. Those yeah. those three literally just did whatever they wanted, right? <laughs> and we talked yesterday how Ben Myers, LOC, and Cogliano all looked really good. So three of your four lines for me, I think have had each of them have had one day where the entire line just really gelled and looked great. And I haven't felt that way about this this third line. I thought Tatar has had really good days the first two days. I I didn't really love the days from either of the other guys individually, uh, and then and so today I was really trying to keep a close eye on them, and it just felt like a really weird chemistry between them, not not good or bad obviously just like they're still very much feeling it out, and so that's where I think. I'm about struggling, to cough. you I I can hear it coming. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, and that's where I think that has become like a just like I want to I want to see them get games together, sure, and and see how they work their way through this because chemistry is it's it's completely unpredictable. You have no idea how it's going to go. You can you know we did not know the day that Miko Rantanen got drafted that he and Nathan McKinnon were going to be this dominant duo next to each other in particular, and sometimes things just really work right. And so far, this this trio, to, to my eye, does not look like it's clicked at all and looks weird. And their skill sets, like knowing and going through the micro stats and uh, knowing their games, going through all the video that I went through over the summer, I was curious how it was going to look because there isn't an obvious meshing of skills. There's not There, there are no compliments here. They are all guys that want to shoot pucks, not pass pucks. And none of them want to carry it through the neutral zone and all these different things, right? So how are they going to work together has kind of been on the forefront of my mind. And through three days of camp, I don't think they have very well. And again, I don't think it's been bad. Like, I'm not looking at it going, oh, my God, they need to change something. But going into the preseason games, since now we are getting into games, it has become one of those I want to see them together in a game setting, and how they work their way through a 60-minute period. No, go ahead. I just want to add color to what you're saying, too, because I think I'm seeing something Mm. that's similar. But one note I have is that this is among the lines that we've seen some of the mix of players that are playing newly alongside each other, which is interesting because, like, looking at Ben Myers, Logan O'Connor, Andrew Cagliano – those have familiarity with each other. Mm-hmm. This is why I think separately, Duran fitting in well, playing alongside 
who he's played alongside even in the absence of McKinnon has been interesting because what I'm about to say is, okay, these guys are new, newly playing alongside each other. Obviously, Tatar would have some familiarity with each other. But what I see is connections from one player to a second, but not all three working together, if that makes sense. Like, I'll watch Ross Colton drive up ice, and he seems like a strong puck carrier who will – force his way into the zone. But if by some chance he gets worked off the puck, I do see Miles Wood coming up right behind him to recover it and bully his way to recover the puck. And I see those two work together then with that physicality that we've talked about each of them is capable of bringing. I've seen that complement one another. But then it's like there's this third missing piece in that play. There isn't then the handling in Miles Wood specifically. That's where I think he falls a little bit short on that line. But that is where Tatar, I think, has been the strongest on that line so far has been in the puck skill. And I've seen a little bit more distribution from Tatar of anyone on that line so far. And I think that has been one of his strengths. And it's interesting then because I'm also not seeing him bullying his way for pucks the same way that I'm seeing Miles Wood do that. And so I see the way Tatar will compliment Colton. And I see the way that Wood will compliment Colton. And I kind of view Colton as this neutralizing piece, quite literally, at the middle of these mm -hmm. two that – sort of can play to the strengths of both of these players, but it hasn't been fully realized because we haven't seen it in gameplay. And that's where, to emphasize what AJ's saying, I agree that I just think I need to see how this looks at game speed yeah. to better evaluate what I'm looking at because I see the way they complement each other like in pairs, but I haven't seen it all three at once just yet. I still think there's room for that possibility because these are guys who are relatively newly playing with one another, especially with Colton being a completely new piece there. And getting experience down the middle, too. Like, he has played center before, but I think that this is an elevated role for him that he's also getting acclimated to, in addition to all of these players adjusting to the speed at which Colorado plays. I, it's not just them adjusting to their role in Colorado. It's them adjusting to their roles with each other, right? Mika Rantanen, a great example. When he plays with Nathan McKinnon, he's usually the guy riding shotgun. He's, he's not going to be the one carrying pucks doing things like that. We saw last year when McKinnon was out. He was the guy driving that thing. Mm -hmm. So it, there is a little bit of a feeling out, I think, for, for these guys of, okay, who's going to be the guy that's, that's really driving the play here? Who's going to be the guy that's playing off of that? Who's feeding who? Who's setting up what? And it does feel a little bit disjointed through a couple of days. I also think that Miles Wood is in kind of a disadvantage here. He's I the, agree. He's of, of their Colorado's top nine forwards, he's the only one that doesn't have a 20-goal season yep. in the NHL. And um, I think, like, his second year he had, like, 19, and he hasn't really come particularly close since. Um, so you're you're talking about, like, Colorado's top nine has a lot of really good players in it, and guys with some track records. Ross Colton would be the other one without the lengthy track record, but, um, you know, the, the season certainly that he had two years ago um, inspires a lot of confidence that he could be a lot more than what he has been so far. And so, like, Wood, Wood kind of sticks out as, like, yeah, maybe he's just being asked to do a little much at the moment. Or, you know, he kind of looks like the guy to me that you could move around to try and fit a, a very – and give him very specific responsibilities on either a top line or a second line. You know, we – we get so caught up in the designations of like, oh, this is your first line or second line or third, whatever. But when when they signed Tatar, it cha it transformed Colorado's top nine into you have a you if you want you can have a true blue top line elite like number one line in the NHL, or you could have three really good lines, two of them with superstars, but all of them with very productive players. And with Wood, it might just be trying to find as you were talking about trying to find his fit and where he is best served in this Colorado forward lineup. Maybe it's not here. I want to see a couple of games and, you know, to, to see that. But it could be that that his skill set, you know, the same way it was when Arturi Lekkinen got here. Yeah. Where yeah. Arturi Lekkinen started out on the third line in kind of a more traditional role. Ended up being a role player on the first line in the Exactly. Yeah. And they, they found an amazing fit for him next to Nathan McKinnon. I'm not suggesting that Miles Wood is likely to <laughs> going to end up next to Nathan McKinnon here, but maybe maybe he ends up maybe it's better served that he ends up between or or like where Lekkonen is right now, next to you know it, it was Riley Tufty, but like it's really like Ryan Johansson and Val Machushkin, you know, and then Lekkonen ends up next to Colton and 
Tatar instead. And you just you end up with just this really healthy mix of physicality and size and skill on all three of those lines. I, I guess my question is with that specific third line with wood on it. We talked about this off air, but who's going to be the responsible adult? On that <laughs> yeah. Line? Wood, we kind of know that play style. It's going to be wild. He's going to run into stuff. But mm-hmm. how much like defensive responsibility is actually there? Not sure. We actually talked to Colton today about potentially penalty killing. You'll hear about that in a little bit. And then Tatar has very good underlying defensive numbers, but as we've kind of already talked about, he's more of a finesse player. He's mm-hmm. not someone that you're relying on Val Nichushkin style, grind you out and take pucks away type style. Nichushkin and Lekkinen. Both, yeah, Lekkinen both, too, for both sure. Both do these things. Um, you know, with the they they're both excellent along the wall. Yep. Which one of those guys can kind of step into that job and be like Come hell or high water, this guy is winning you a 50-50 puck along the boards and getting it out of the zone and getting you moving up ice. And that's just where, and I think this is specifically my, I guess, concern here. I don't know that I would really call it a concern, but my curiosity here is a lot more focused on Miles Wood and where he specifically is going to fit. My note for Miles Wood, too not for him to deliver directly to him. But is You're I, listening. I don't think that he thrives in this environment because of what his value as a player is. I think it's best observed in game play when he's fighting his way through traffic, positioning himself at the net front and looking for rebounds off of Tomas Tatar's shot, for example. And that's where I think we're really going to see Miles Wood thrive is in game, game play, as we alluded to, because he isn't necessarily the skill guy on that line. I don't think we're going to see him thrive in this environment. And that's sort of what I'm looking for in talking about then who has to be especially like defensively responsible, who is going to be the heavy four checking guy and is going to be good for winning those battles. It has to be Miles Wood. And I think I just look at the job description that each of these players was sort of enticed to come to Colorado for or in, you know, like Ross Colton's case, he just sort of came to Colorado. Yeah, Yeah. he Ross Colton is going to have to reevaluate penalty killing at the NHL level. And Miles Wood is going to have to become that player. And I think this is, you know, it's like getting hired for a job on the promise that you're going to get Excel certified. Like now <laughs> Miles Wood has to get Excel certified. He was brought here to fill this role and he, he might have some of the natural skill set to do it well, but he has to also add some of that skills training to his resume. This podcast loves spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> Miles Wood, I hope you're listening. <laughs> Eric, take us away from the yeah. spreadsheets, please. <laughs> I, was, I got lost here. I'm just kidding. Um, I can't read spreadsheets. Um, I'm just kidding. No. It's all good. Spreadsheets are good. Um, here's my take on it. I, I'm not a big fan of those practices. I I know they got to be done. And, 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 you know, they're practices that are emphasizing on systems, right? I mean, I, I like the old school. The, and this... I would say the majority of the league are still doing this where they're doing scrimmages and, you know, Mm -hmm. seeing the environment and, you know, giving the opportunities for young kids to be next to their superstars and, you know, before they go back to juniors 72 hours later. Um, I I do understand what Bednar and the coaching staff are doing. I get it. And he's done this for a few years now. He wants to really emphasize on the systems. And so as my take on, 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 on Wood, Tatar and Colton, all three are new. All three have never played under his system. Um, once you've played for a coach, you can play with your eyes closed because you know exactly <laughs> what you're doing because that's your brain is not telling you what to do. You're actually doing it. And you see that when a guy gets traded to a place that you know actually plays hockey the right way, when the Avalanche play hockey the right way, right? It's not like loosey-goosey, everybody goes everywhere, you know? Um, so you, Yeah, exactly. I mean, so you, you have a team, you, uh, you know, a system. you got to follow it. But it takes a couple practices because every team is different. They like to, you know, you to sag a little lower here on, on the defensive side. Or they want you to go at it this way on the four check. So there's a couple of different things. And those practices last couple of days are that. So the common denominator on those three guys, they're all three are new. All three have never played for, for Bednar. Um, you know, even tough to you, like, you know, of course, he's not going to end up there. But, you know, he's playing with whatever it was, Val and uh, uh, Lecky. Lecky, yeah. I mean, huh. And there's no better systematic player than Lecky, right? In the, in the whole NHL. I mean, that, that's why he's so valuable. So it's hard, and you're looking at each other, and then you're like, oh, is this what we're doing? And, you know, is this what he likes? And so you go, and that's, 
you know, it's hard for, for you to gel in those types of situations. I think games will be telling. You can't force chemistry. You can't. I mean, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes guys mesh. Sometimes guys don't mesh. Do I think that you mentioned a little something earlier about flop, maybe, you know, like an and who knows? I, I, I don't mind that. You know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but I do like the fact that they're touching on systems. Starting tomorrow, there's games. They mean business. The whole lineup means business. We heard it from the new guys. They walk in here. They know that this is, you know, you got to win the Stanley Cup. You got to be the last man standing. Whoever wins the last game of the year is usually a successful year. And for the other 31 teams, it's not. I mean, that's the mindset you got to have. And then I'll say it right here, you know, I'm going to go live with it. Ready? Ready. Mm -hmm. Miles Wood will score 20. Let's go. In what is that? six years? Or? No. Whoa. Oh, that is. Whoa. No. Whoa. Miles Whoa. Wood this season will score 20 goals. Uh, I Put it down. Of, if you're looking for a reason why we think these guys will figure it out, find their role here, take a look at the three of them. Miles Wood, super hardworking guy. Tomas Tatar, we've talked up his character a ton. How, how many players have got? oh, he's amazing. He works so hard. He's great. Ross Colton. Eric came away from our interview today saying he's the biggest character guy, favorite ever, all time. Love him. From 15 minutes. So That's all you need? <laughs> there you go. Isn't this how draft processes work? You meet a prospect for 15 right. minutes and... That's it. Yep. That's, that's how I operate. <laughs> Love it. I support that one. So... Hey, I met my wife, and three weeks later, I mean, three months later, I was like, hey, <laughs> let's get married. It's been 25 years. There that you go. worked out pretty there well. There you for go. <laughs> so you got it down, Pat. Uh, <laughs> we are brought to you by Factor Meal Kits. Look, we've been doing these long days at the <coughs> rink. It's super easy to get home, pick up your Factor Meal Kit, throw it in the microwave for a couple minutes, boom, you've got your lunch ready to go. Are you guys using yours? Yeah, I used all of mine. I ate them all very quickly. I <laughs> ate mine, and then I subscribed. <laughs> I have, I have. I have I have six of them in my fridge right now, and I have six more on the way next week. My wife is like, I would subscribe if they only send the smoothies. Like, I like the smoothies. <laughs> I didn't get the smoothies because I'm cheap, but <laughs> I like the meals, man, and they do great. You know, I've been uh, I've been taking care of myself a lot better over the summer, and uh, you know, making a bunch of changes to my diet and stuff. And yep. the factor the factor uh, meal kits have been wonderful for me. Well, every week they have over 34 flavor-packed meals to choose from. Again, it's just two it's minutes. It's a lot. It's hard to pick. Yeah, you, had, you have to, to pick, make man. real decisions. Like, uh, it, Super quick, super easy to make. If you haven't tried it, give them a try today. They have all sorts of things that can fit whatever you're in, even if you're looking for calorie-smart meals that have less than 550 calories. They can cover you with that. If you need an extra booth with wellness, you can get Protein Plus meals that have over 30 grams of protein. Uh, all sorts of ridiculous add-ons and things, too. You can get breakfasts if you want, pancakes, bacon and cheddar, egg bites, potatoes, all the good stuff. Everything they have totally covered when you head to factormeals.com slash dnvrabs50 today. You can get 50% off your order. Again, that's factormeals.com. Slash DNVR abs 50 to get that 50% off with Factor today. And then when you want to make a little bit of money to buy Factor, that's when you head over to Bet365. You got to get over there. Bet365, they don't do ordinary. They think every sport should be epic. Every single play, whether it's a touchdown, a goal, even just a, a simple hit in hockey, all of that. Should matter. So you can see for yourself when you sign up with Bet365, you'll get $365 in bonus bets when you bet just a single dollar. Whatever sport, whatever moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. You must be 21 or older, physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER today. Look, jump on it. Go make some money with Bet365. It's that easy. Second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast, and we've got an interview with Ross Colton to bring you here. I think we all really like this interview, so mm -hmm. I hope you guys like it too. Yeah, yeah, roll the footage for us when you're ready. All right, we're back for day three of training camp here with Ross Colton today. Ross, first of all, thank you for joining us on the show. We start everybody off with the bad food take question. One food that you like that other people might think is a little weird, maybe a little gross. Mine is mayo on burritos, so it can't be as bad as that. You'll be all right. 
That is uh, that is a little weird. Unless it's spicy mayo, then it's pretty it's good. Unfortunately, regular okay, mayo. Not so weird. Um, I don't, I wouldn't say I have anything like crazy, but I like really love pickles. And like I could just like eat them at any time of the day, like breakfast yes. or like a snack or late night. So I don't know if that's weird, but that's we'll put it in the weird. Category. Is that weird? Yeah, I don't weird, know. Weird. Look, any I'm, time of day, I could just have some. I'm on team pickle. I'm okay. with you on this. AJ, not so much. Not okay, so much. Then on there team we go. Pickle. Then maybe it is a little weird. <laughs> we'll, count, we'll count. Breakfast pickles might be a bit weird. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll count that. Hopefully, that's a good answer. Uh, getting into Colorado here, obviously you signed a four-year deal with the Avalanche. Uh, was that a pretty easy process for you? Did you want to be here, or how did that all go down? Uh, yeah. Um, once I found out that I was getting traded, I was super excited to hear that it was Colorado. Um, and then in terms of, you know, negotiations and stuff, obviously it's a business. Um, I wanted to be here, you know, for as long as I can. And, uh, you know, it took a little bit, uh, you know, both sides, obviously it's a business and, um, took a little bit of time just to, you know, meet where, you know, both sides felt was comfortable. And, um, yeah, four years, I'm super excited and, you know, can't wait for the season to start. Looking at that term, too, there's obvious room to grow, and it seems like your role is projected to be even elevated from what it was in Tampa. I was just curious how you're looking forward to embracing that little bit of a promotion. Yeah, uh, you know, for me personally, I just um, come to the rink with the same mindset just to try and get a little bit better each day. Um, you know, obviously... Um, Tampa, Colorado, similar um, organizations and, you know, have a bunch of superstars, a bunch of guys that can play. So, you know, obviously for me, I just don't want to look too much into it. I know I'm going to have to grow into, a, you know, whatever my role may be here. And, uh, you know, right now I think it's just, you know, playing center. I had I didn't play center too much last year. So um, I did when I first came to the league. So I'm excited to, you know, get back down the middle and, you know, hopefully, um, you know, if it's winning faceoffs, killing penalties or, you know, for me personally, hopefully just scoring goals. I think that's the, you know, kind of role I want to fill. We got a little bit of the similar background. You went to prep school. Uh, I said the same thing to Miles Wood. Um, you played at Vermont. I played I at St. Lawrence. Okay. Um, you're from the East. I'm from the East. And I got to be honest with you. I just, on behalf of like the alumni and everybody, welcome to Colorado. Oh, I'm, thank you. I'm a kid from the East. Colorado's home now. Married <laughs> a girl from here. So, but uh, yeah, just wanted to wish you a, a very nice welcome here to Colorado. You're gonna love it. No, thank you. It's a little you. different. Actually, we have the sun here compared to the east. You know, the sun <laughs> comes that, out. I'm hearing there's yeah. more sunny days than on yes. in Florida. Someone did yep. say that yes. to me. So I thought that was. I didn't expect that, so exactly. I'm excited for the winter because they said it's really beautiful. You're going to wake up and the sun's out. You're going to be like, where am I? You know, <laughs> what's going on? But anyway, just uh, welcome. And obviously, what was it like growing up a little bit in the East, you know, an American uh, youth hockey player? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, for me, I kind of traveled all over. I did a pretty crazy path. Um, you know, did I did prep school in New Jersey and was fortunate enough to play with my brother for two years, which was kind of probably... One, two of the best years of hockey in my life just because it was pretty special for, you know, not only for me, but for my family, just so they were able to, you know, reunite us at an older age when hockey was actually a little bit more meaningful and having some family and friends come to a bunch of those games was pretty awesome. Um, went away to Taft, so that was um, a bit of an adjustment, you know, first time being away from yeah. home at a pretty young age. Um, the schooling was pretty hard. Um, and, you know, schooling on, like, Saturdays wasn't ideal. <laughs> that was definitely something I had to get used to. Um, and then um, transitioning to the USHL and then to Vermont um, was uh, was a lot of fun. I think my years in Cedar Rapids were two of the best years of hockey for me. I think that's kind of when I took that next jump. So I give credit to my coach there. He was, uh, he was instrumental for me. Um, and then Vermont for two years, Syracuse for two years, and then um, finally was fortunate enough to make an NHL lineup. In hearing about your path through hockey, looking at the AHL, there's guys in camp that are vying for NHL jobs but might find themselves going back to the American League for a little bit more time. And I was curious, because you're proof of concept that the time spent there can prime you for an NHL role one day where you don't look back. Is there a perspective that you found helpful in taking that time along the way to develop? Uh, yeah, totally. I think um, for me personally, you know, my two years in Syracuse were definitely tough. Um, it wasn't always, you know, smooth sailing, especially my first year. Um, we had a bunch of older guys on the team who, you know, kind of were established NHLers. And uh, we had some practices that, you know, I kind of had to look in the mirror and say, you know, I don't think I'm ever going to make it to the NHL. So it's definitely a process. Everybody's rule is uh, or route is different to the NHL. It's not always going to be easy. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a process, I think, is the best way to put it. I got to know, what's the logo on the hat? Uh, 
Oh, I think uh, my one of my good buddies that I played with got married. This, if that's, that does look does like a whistling, like whistling bear. bear. It does, <laughs> married, that would be whistling bear. Uh, you've been on both sides of the Cup Finals. You won back in 2021. You lost to the Abs in 2022. Is there anything you took away from this Colorado team from uh, that series? Uh, yeah, I think uh, that uh, they're just a bunch of warriors. I think is the best way to put it. Guys who you know want to win. Um, you know that series um, was definitely was definitely tough. Um, you know they know what it takes to win. Uh, that's what I've seen just from day one here. It's definitely a different vibe. You know it's 110 uh, percent right from day one. You know right into systems and you know we're just getting right after it. So it's going to take a little bit for I think some of us new guys to maybe get adjusted to the system. But uh, I think you know the leadership and the coaches have done a great job of kind of making us feel welcome right away and kind of bringing us a part of it. Bednar has talked about using that Tampa team as a bit of inspiration for the the Avs stylistically. Can you see some similarities between those two systems? Uh, yeah, no, you d you definitely can. I think you know you could start with you know both teams have a bunch of superstars. I think that always you know it that, helps. That, that it always helps. helps when you guys got you know Kale or Nate or Miko. I mean, you can go down the list on this roster. And uh, so I think uh, you know when you have a group of guys like that, and then you can kind of fill in guys who you know are established and know how to win. I think that always helps. So. Um, I think that's what kind of they were going with, with, you know, Brian, maybe me and Miles and Thomas and, you know, some other guys who, um, you know, they have the pieces there so that maybe um, um, it kind of just gives us that extra boost of confidence that, you know, they believe in us and think that, you know, maybe we'll be those next pieces that can kind of take us back over that hump. A lot of it has been made lately here, especially around here, is, is the hunger factor. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Obviously they won. I'm talking about the Avs. With you not being there, obviously <laughs> on the other side, I'm not. I'm not trying to go like this. On. <laughs> but you know, coming back last year, obviously a short summer. This year, a different summer for them. Can you feel a little bit of the? I've even been in Tampa. Obviously, very similar situations. Can you feel the guys like being a little hungrier this year? Yeah, no, you definitely can. And um, like I said before, you definitely felt that that first day of camp when you know. Um, you know, originally you think you come in, maybe do a couple flow drills, feel the puck a little bit. It, it wasn't that. I think the second drill was a battle drill. So that just goes to show that, you know, guys are hungry. You want to win. There's no better feeling in the world, obviously, than, you know, climbing that mountain and winning. So um, long summers are, you know, not fun summers. So, um, you know, they had that last year. So I think guys came back a little bit earlier. Um, guys are ready. Guys are in shape. And, you know, you could see that that intensity has, has been there from day one. On this side of things, we grew to respect and sometimes be frustrated by John Cooper. And I was curious what it was like playing under him and what type of a leader he is. Yeah, um, he's obviously a, a great coach who has wanted pretty much, I think, every level. You can kind of go down the list. He, he's, uh, he, he's a great speaker. He knows, uh, you know, when to, when to push guys and when to, you know, kind of, you know, sit back and maybe give some off days. So. Um, for me, uh, you know, nothing but uh, respect for him. He gave me a chance when I was young, and, you know, I think what helped me a lot was he kind of put me in the position to succeed. He didn't, you know, throw me in right in the gauntlet and say, hey, you know, we need you to score a million points or, you know, do this. He just said, you know, play your game. This is the role, and, um, you know, made me feel confident in that role, and um, it goes a long way when, you know, hearing that from him because he's obviously won. So uh, kind of just whatever he said, I kind of just tried to take and run with it, and, um, was fortunate enough to, you know, establish my position there with him. Uh, the Avs, obviously, goal with this team to try and break into the top six, or, or what are you looking at for the future with you and this organization? Uh, I think, you know, time will tell that. I think for me right now, like I said, I just try and come to the rink with the right mindset, get better every day. Um, you know, I know um, what I can bring, what I can kind of do, and um, if that's the role that, you know, a coach wants me to be in, then obviously I want to, you know, take that and run with it. But, you know, for me, from game one, I – I think just the style of play that I play with is just kind of try and play with a chip on my shoulder, you know, finish my checks. And um, but in the same breath, I think that, you know, I can score goals in this league. So um, try and bring a little bit of both, try and get under guy's skin. And, uh, you know, if that uh, opportunity presents itself, then talked about how there are some similarities between Tampa and Colorado systems. And a lot of training camp is laying the foundation for identity. And I was curious in this short time, what your takeaways have been of what Colorado's identity is. Um, it's definitely play fast, and I think I've I felt that on the first day with the altitude. I think that was kind of 
the first time that I said, well, I don't know if I'm out of shape or I just can't breathe. <laughs> Welcome to Colorado. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, they definitely play fast. And if you, you can't skate, I don't think you're fit for this organization. So I think that identity of, you know, um, play with speed, you know, chip pucks out and, you know, kind of what I love is they have so many great defensemen that join the play and get up in the rush. And that just creates so many more scoring chances. And I think that's why they've had so much success and, um, you know, I think are obviously at the top of the league and, you know, ozone time and chances off the rush and stuff like that. So I definitely think uh, that speed through the neutral zone, you know, breaking out of the zone is definitely the identity that I've noticed so far. And you talked about possibly embracing this, but what is your comfort penalty killing? Uh, I actually haven't really um, penalty killed too much since I've been up in the league. So um, I, you know, I did it a bunch when I was in the American League and um, I've definitely done it before. And I think for me, you know, I pride myself on winning face off. So if um, if they want me to be a guy who can go out there, win a face off and then, you know, have to kill penalties, um, I've done it before. I, I would obviously embrace that opportunity. And this will be my last one, but you've obviously played in Ball Arena. I was curious what it feels like looking ahead to the first time that you put on an Avalanche jersey and play there in front of the home crowd. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. You know, first time throwing the jersey on the other day during media day kind of just felt pretty special. Um, uh, and then, uh, yeah, I think uh, what I remember is just those games in the finals when they would sing, is it like the Blink 182 yeah, song? Yeah, I, yeah. I always thought that was so cool. And you know, I'd be sitting on the bench, I think, you know, bobbing my head a little bit, singing along or something like that. So, you know, they bring the energy, and obviously that fuels us to, uh, you know, want to play for them. Hopefully you can help the fans sing that a lot this season. That would be awesome. Uh, Ross, thank you so much for coming on the show. Come on, maybe not nice. quite as cool as a whistling band. No, I but think that's cool. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we wish you good luck on the season, and we hope you have a good rest of your day. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right, we are back. A lot, to, a lot of ground to cover. An interesting guy to talk to because he does have that experience against the Abs in the biggest stage possible. When you guys look at Ross, do you think his game is built for Colorado? Go ahead. <laughs> you, I mean, I, I love yes. his game. I, I, it's a simple yes for me. Um, not only that, I think he's a character guy. He's one, which is huge for me. Um, there's a hunger factor that he talks about too. He's gonna want once you do it, you want more. Uh, intelligent young man, smart player. Uh, I think he's suited exactly for what. Uh, if you look at the Avs roster last year, he makes the Avs roster better. You know what I mean? Right away, he makes. I mean, those three guys that we've been talking about the last few minutes, they make the Avs roster better. And I think it's important once you're so top heavy, you know, with with Nathan and Miko and obviously Kale on the back end. Guys like that now really solidify their roster, and I love the acquisition. I, I, I love what they did this summer, and I think this guy's just a perfect fit for this roster. It, is he a type of guy, especially with how much we've talked about the Avs, maybe non-standard group of prospect pool guys that they have at events like this right now? Look, Colton's a guy who had a little bit of a longer path to the NHL. He's a guy who admitted on – interview hey there were times when i didn't think i was ever going to make it to the nhl does he become a guy who can talk to some of the kids in the abs organization and and kind of be a i don't know if leader is the right word but a guide to some of these kids whether that be by example or through talking to them i'm not quite sure just because the way the groups have been separated, I don't know that he's had much exposure to yeah. a lot of the players that he could have because not only did he have that path to the NHL, he did it the right way in that at every level, he stayed there long enough to get better and graduate and never look back. And I think that's a really difficult task to do. That also speaks to who Ross Colton is as a player. He absorbs all of that information, implements it in his game very effectively. And not everybody receives messaging that well to grow as a player. And I think that's why some players find themselves back has just been forward. Even if that meant two years in the AHL, that's it. And I, I think that's really impressive. And why I point to maybe this is something that he does by leading by example, because even looking at the opportunity that was potentially still there for him in Tampa, I think he'd graduated beyond it. I don't think Tampa would have had the money to make it work and the role to make it work for Ross Colton. Because I think if they could make the money work, then he would have to also play the elevated role in Tampa, and I don't think they could make the money work. So where I'm going with this is, 
as we've seen in his career so far, I think he is stepping into an even higher role than he's seen before. And that's what I'm excited for and why I think he's a, a good fit in Colorado is I think that the player we've seen isn't even the player we're about to get in the next couple of years. I think they have big plans for him and everything he's done through this point points to him being able to handle that. I do also think where he's going to fit and where I'm most excited about him coming to Colorado. It's not done anything to do with the one-timer or the skating or the physicality. All the stuff you know he's good at. Yeah, all, this, all the things that you could watch that made him one of my favorites to watch outside of Colorado. I loved watching Tampa Bay games because I was a really big Ross Colton fan. But the thing that I think he's going to be bringing to this bottom six, and Miles Wood is also he he's one of those guys that just chews through glass, right? Like, there's no whiskey drinking there. He just <laughs> eats the glass. Don't bother putting anything in it, man. All he wants to do is compete, and when he gets in game, he's kind of a nut job. Like he goes, he goes hard at people, and he makes life miserable. He is one of those guys. He just inflicts misery on the opponent every shift. It's not. It's it, that 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 classic. Like we we joked last year uh, when Jared Bettner said that Anton Bleed played a loud game. Ross Colton plays a loud game, but he's also really good. <clears throat> and I think that's where. More than all the other things that we know he can do as an NHLer, the skills and all the stuff that will translate to Colorado, he brings that element of, and, and this is no disrespect to Dennis Mulgan and you know Lars Eller and uh, Alex Newhook, those kinds of guys. He brings such a different dynamic and o o almost an angry element to a bottom six that needed that last year. It needed, it needed a guy who was not just out there to hit you, but could beat you in a variety of ways, could punish you. If you make a mistake with the puck, you're going to get hit, but also you have to worry about turning the puck over to this guy because he will score. He is going to score 20 this year. feel f pretty confident about that. Um, and, and he is a guy that he doesn't have, like, incredible size. Like, he's, you don't look at a guy that's six feet tall and go, oh, my gosh, but he's so stocky, and he's thick all the, all the way down, and – that is a dude that that is a dude that just is not fun to play against. You know, he's he's so physically imposing on the ice and the competitiveness, it just it's so evident. And I think it's going to be such an important element that that changes how hard Colorado is to play against. Obviously, when you play against good players, life is difficult. <laughs> it's just it's just misery, right? But when you're also playing against guys who are good. Also do that and bring that bring those elements to the ice. And my, again, Miles Wood is the same way, which is if they fit together, it doesn't matter who if it's Tomas Tatar or who whatever, those guys are not fun to play against. Yep. Like there is right now in Colorado's forward lineup, there's no relief. You don't look at that line and go, Oh, thank God. You think you think anybody wants to go out there and Logan O'Connor with the gums constantly yap, 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 and then the physicality that he brings. Andrew Cogliano is human flubber. Like, you think that's fun to play against? You think it's fun to play against Miko Ranton and Nathan McKinnon together? You think it's going to be fun to play against Nichushkin and Lechler in this forward core? And Ross Colton is quite literally at the center of it on that third line, which is where I think his game is going to blossom in a big way, is that center position. He is a – Alex Newhook might end up being a better NHL player over the next five to ten years. Than what Ross Colton is. But in the immediate for this role. For where the Avalanche are, for what the Avalanche needed, they needed Ross Colton. That he checks he checks so many boxes that they did not have checked last year. F I T. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I mean it's he was the he's the one guy where in the offseason, you know, you can get excited about Drew Ann, obviously the all the potential and Miles Wood, you know what he is. You know, Ryan Johansson's had a pretty good career and you can be excited there. Ross Colton is the one that I am, for me, that is a set and forget. I am not worried about it. I'm not worried about fit. I'm not worried about the ability to produce. He's going to do all these things. Is he going to be a little more expensive than you would have liked at $4 million? Probably. And on day one, it was probably a little pricey for my personal taste. By the end of that four-year contract, I'm not going to care. He's going to be so good and so important for this Avalanche team. It's not going to matter. He is, for me, 
He was their key acquisition in the offseason. I think by year two, the money I'll feel comfortable with. It might even be by like December, you know? You know, like it, it, because I agree with you. I don't think it'll take long at all for us to look at that money and go, okay. Uh, I did want to drill down into the expanded opportunity for Ross a little bit. He talked about potentially penalty killing, maybe to get top six minutes, whether that's at center or at wing, depending on what happens. How much can we reasonably, reasonably expect him to take forwards in these new areas this season? Say sorry, it again. Sorry, I yawned right as you said no, the end of that. Uh, how much can we expect him to expand into these new areas this season, be it top six, PK, whatever? Well, I, I mean, trust to, you know what I mean, which, sure, you know. Got to earn some of that. That's right. Yep. You know, he will. And maybe I wouldn't be surprised to see him in preseason there. Um, I lived it. You know what I mean? Obviously, he's a better player than I was. But, you know, killing a lot of penalties at the American League level. And then you got to the NHL and. You're never asked to do it, you know what I mean? But you're actually, you excel at it in the American League, and you feel confident. I think he looked confident in his answer when it was posed by Megan. Like, yeah, I, I can do it. I mean, if you want to you know, add that to my game, I'll do it. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, please, no, I don't want. You know what I mean? Like, he was he's a very cerebral player. Uh, I'm not worried about him. It comes down to, you know, sometimes it's opportunities, too. Like, who's hurt that day? Who's not in the lineup? You know what I mean? But I think this guy can... You know, produce great minutes, whether it's going to be more five on five minutes or even, you know, if you at some point you got to manage your minutes as well, right? You know, it's important with the top end guys, but it's important for those guys too. So, where does he fit the best? We'll see. But uh, he, I think this guy can take on more than he's obviously taken in Tampa. Well, and, and when you look at it, you know, Cogliano and LOC are going to be out there at some point. Mm-hmm. They're probably going to be together. And between Nachushkin and Lekkonen, you've got two excellent defensive forwards. My my thing has been you can take Lekkonen off of your power play because he's such a good PK guy. Take Nachushkin off of your penalty kill and put Colton there because right now you need somebody Face to win off. you. about a lot on our show in terms of... Huge. They only matter when they matter. Right. Like a neutral zone faceoff? Who gives a shit? You know, unless it's three on three, it's whatever. There's however many of them per game. You don't look at the team percentage at the end of it and go, oh, those are all important. But a, a PK, to start a PK, a face-off, if you win that thing and you clear the puck, you kill 30 seconds. You haven't even done anything. And Ross Colton is, has been, in his career so far, very good at face-offs. And having a third-line center that doesn't play PK for you, you know, Miles Wood probably isn't going to be on the PK. Tomas Tatar is probably not going to be on the PK. You would like to, you're talking about managing minutes, you would like to manage some of the minutes of some of your, you know, Lekkonen, take him off a power play. Nachushkin, you can take him off a PK. And you can manage all of the minutes overall here if Ross Colton can take that PK job, win those faceoffs, and be an effective guy in that role. It's a huge step forward for the overall just the the completeness of your unit of your forward core because if he can do that in if he's successful in that role he also becomes your go-to face-off guy in 45 seconds left yeah. you're mm-hmm. you're protecting a one goal lead you're in the defensive zone that's your guy you know it's no longer maybe Miko can win it you know maybe you're just hoping to win this thing with one of your guys that's not Nathan McKinnon because he's not going to win those. And you're not going to watch JT Confer. You can't watch JT Confer go out there and lose a whole bunch of them this year on that offside. You know, you have a guy in Ross Colton now that can do a lot of that for you. And, you know, Ryan Johansson as the right-handed face-off guy to replace JT is an important guy. as well, yeah. Is an important guy too, but... But not a PK. Yeah. Right. But with Colton, you are saying, okay, how are you going to get that bang for your buck? Getting him because he can be on your second power play unit. He can give you good good even strength minutes. But if he can also add the PK to his to his resume, he becomes an all situations player for you. He scores 20 goals. He gives you 20 assists. He's playing in all situations for you. Your $4 million is a huge deal. It's a huge deal at that point. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. It's not really anything additional. It's as if, though, his role 
is is still very similar to what it was in Tampa, at least in year one. Oh, but sure. it's laying mm-hmm. the foundation for it to be increased down the line because he was on PP2 in Tampa. The other thing is he only takes a step forward in getting on the penalty kill in the first place. So that's already new opportunity that's going to be added to his resume there. But everything else, too, <coughs> whether he does get time on the second line with Colorado, which I think is something that they're going to it's still a promotion at the end of the day. Even though in the first year it does really resemble his role in Tampa, it's still going to be elevated from what it was with the opportunity to be even bigger. So he's got to grab it, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I also just think the consistency of it, because last sure. year Tampa... He was all over the place. Tampa yeah. had so many, you know, Sorelli missed so much time um, with the, I think it was a knee injury at the beginning of the year. Uh, and so Sorelli only played like 45 games, something like that last year. And... Colton was the guy, he was kind of their Mr. Fix-It, where he, whatever whatever their lineup needed on that given day, Colton was the guy that moved around and did a lot of that. Colorado's not asking him to do any of that. Right now on day one, Colorado's saying, well, just go be our 3C. Just go out there and do, do this one particular job for us. And I think that consistency is really big for a lot of these guys. I agree. And if you want to consistently watch the abs, you can do it with Fubo TV. Mm, Get over to FuboTV.com slash DNVR today to order. You get over 140 live channels, including sports, shows, movies, news. You can even stream live TV from any device. So it's a great low price, the lowest price for all of your Colorado sports. You can start watching immediately with a free trial if you just want to try it out. There's no contracts or any commitments or anything like that, and they give you a 1,000 hours of DVR, too. So it's a great deal. No two ways around it. We got... uh, Football on behind the scenes right now. We could be watching it with Fubo. It's just that easy. Um, get it on it. Use Fubo. Go to FuboTV.com slash DNVR today. And when you sign up there, you get 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. And then when you enjoy your sports and want to go play some sports, hit up Broken Tee Golf Course. It's the place to go to get an awesome experience out on the golf course. They have 27 total holes, 18-hole championship course, and a little nine-hole par three if you want something quick and a little bit easier. Uh, Great pro shop, great restaurant in Wyatt's, uh, all sorts of good teaching professionals and everything you expect out of a top-tier golf course. You can go to BrokenTee.com today to make tee times and get the latest updates. Plus, if you use code DNVR10, you get 10% off your tee time. So jump on it. Get the DNVR10 code over at BrokenTeeGolf.com. Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. Uh, I don't want to get too much into the the minutia of group about the top guys today because this is day three of training camp. And I think a lot of the top guys showed up today and said, okay, fun's over. We're the best players out here. We're going to work. Defensively, I watched Devon Taves like, take every single player's lunch money in one group. Offensively, you already mentioned the Johansson, Druin. Uh, who was the third guy there? I've already forgotten. Rantanen? Rantanen, yes. Duh. I thought Duh. that was a trick question. It's been a long time. It's been I a long week. I understand. Right? I understand. Uh, and they looked incredible all day. Uh, obviously, Val and Lecky looked dominant on their end of the groups as well. Is this uh, is this them showing? Hey, a bunch of you are about to go play your first NHL game in the preseason tomorrow. This is what it looks like. I just think those guys are great. They're just that good. Yeah. I'd... Okay. They can't hide it any longer. <laughs> Just better than everyone else. Hey. I, I, I like I put it out on Twitter the other day, like the Colorado's my cup pick for a reason. The Tatar thing just really tied it, the whole team together and really for me put them on a different level. And because it just it, it, they they're just too deep too deep now. They're too talented. Yep. Obviously they have to stay healthy, but they're no longer like one forward injury away from oh God, what do we do? <laughs> You know, and yeah. that's that's where I think that that signing changed it for me. And then just looking at him today, like today was a great reminder. When Miko ranted in wants, he takes. <laughs> Miko ranted is just just a world class player. Like we, it's so funny to me that we talk about Miko as like the third banana in Colorado, a guy that is is at least at the moment in his career headed for. A Hall of Fame track kind there, of career. There are teams he would have been their top scorer by twenty points last year. Well, and like, 
He's like he's like a borderline top fifteen player in the NHL, yeah. <laughs> and he's the third best player in Colorado. And then you look at when they're on, you know, when they're healthy. Found the Chushkin. You know, Ryan Ryan Johansson has always been a guy that's left people wanting, and has had multiple point per game seasons. Yep. The guy. The guy is. The guy could be great in Colorado. I mean, there's a lot to prove there. We'll see. You know, but I'm I'm just saying like. The the talent they have assembled to have Tomas Tatar just chilling on your third line, like we we talked a lot about last year about how there was no Nazem Kadri, there was also no Andre Burakovsky. Yep. And having that kind of a guy, a, a, a Burakovsky esque player in Tomas Tatar, now on your third line, it's girl, please. It's it's almost they're not, so good. It's not even about the high end. It's how high they've raised the floor. Of mm-hmm. this hockey team, yeah, and and if you're a fourth line player from another team, a third line player from another team, you're going could be a long night every single time you go up against these guys. I think that's what stood out to me about day three is not just the top guys looking in top form, but especially looking at that group two, which is a little bit more a hodgepodge of things, but it does include Lekkinen and Nichushkin. Yeah, yeah. Nichushkin appeared frustrated yesterday, and I think some of that was the limitations of having someone who had not played center centering in the line rushes. For sure. And that is not to demerit Riley Tufty. It's just, I think, because of how Nachushkin is wired, yep. that was frustrating for him because I think his mind is in compete mode, and that just probably wasn't what he was looking for. I think he had a better day today, and you could see it in how that line worked together as well. And then similarly, like you mentioned, almost baptizing some of these players <laughs> into yeah. the NHL hockey yeah. that they're about to encounter. That was true of Andrew Cagliano. He was flying through guys in a kind of a scary <laughs> way, in in a way that I think was meant to prepare them for the exhibition games. Like, all right, no more easy stuff. Yeah. You're about to go play in ball arena. And so I, I do think there was truth to that as well. It's funny, the, I, the chushkin Tufty connection is almost like the Chushkin saying, hey, you might have gotten away with that shit in Dallas. Here, it's not happening. This is what I think is interesting about the Cagliano thing is because you're, again, and I made this point the other day, but I think it's still true, and it speaks to what Megan's talking about here, of this is what culture looks like. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because you're talking about a a fourth-line guy is going out there and going 200% on the third day of training camp. It is is September 23rd. Their their first game that actually counts in the standings is October 11th. (laughs) Still three weeks away. But there is an expectation that when you get to Colorado, yeah, you get to compete for a Stanley Cup. But you don't, just because you're in Colorado, you don't get to compete. You have to earn it. You have to work for it. And it starts, you don't win a Stanley Cup in June alone. It starts in that dedication and the understanding and the appreciation of the details that go into it, and the every single day that you have to be dedicated, you don't win a Stanley Cup by, oh, this is my job, this is what I do, this is whatever. You have to be obsessed with winning. And that's where the the Cogliano running through kids on third day of training camp, wake the fuck up, guys. Yep. Like it's And it's not like they weren't. It was sending that message of, this is what it is to pull that A on to the front of your chest and to wear that is to play for championships. And to play for championships, you do it every day. It's in practice. It's it's in the way that you work out. It's in every meal that you eat. It consumes your life. You do not win a Stanley Cup without it. You do not win a Stanley Cup going 80%. Yep. And Andrew Cogliano making that point, just by going out and playing the way that he is, that's culture, that's leadership, that's accountability, that is setting a standard and saying anything less than this is unacceptable and you will not be here. And there's a saying that guys in the locker room talk about it. It's every team, but you actually have to apply it. These guys apply it. And it's like you can't just flip the switch on. Flip. I mean, the switch is always on. You can't just flip it. Oh, it's the third pair. Let's flip the switch. And you hear the guys, and that's what they're trying to do. It sounds like it right now. Culture is that. It's on right now until we lift that cup. Mm-hmm. Then we can turn it off, have a couple of drinks, and go home. You know what I mean? <laughs> but right now, it's on. Yep. And that's what you're saying about Cogliano there, showing those kids, you know, oh, this is cool. This is the NHL. No, no, it's not. Like, 
It is cool, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to win the whole thing. And mm -hmm. when you win the whole thing, when you want to win the whole thing, there's a price, there's a sacrifice, there's a commitment level that needs to be there. And not all 32 teams have that level. They don't. There might be what, 10, 11, 12? If that. Yeah. If that, you know what I mean? But it all looks good today because everybody's 0-0. Oh Nobody's lost <laughs> a game, and it's all great, and it's all like, it's awesome. We're great. But you can tell when you walk into a training camp that's got – they mean business. These yeah. guys mean business. I totally agree. And and you can tell it because it's not just empty platitudes. We've talked to Miles Wood and Ross Colton. They both. Two guys who came from pretty good teams last year, and they both said, and, and Ross Colton was part of the Tampa yep. Bay teams that, that, you know, his rookie year was their second championship, and then he was part of the team that got bodied by Colorado. And both of them. Have said they they walk in they get in they get in here they get to Colorado and they say this is different, the attitude here is different the expectations are different, mm -hmm. it's just different, it's not a great word to describe something as big as this to just say oh it's different, but it is and these guys these guys are learning that, all of them said day one they felt it yep. it was palpable yep being around the facility and being around them. This year has felt different from last year. Last year, everybody was tired. Yep. And you could feel it. You could feel the drain that had taken place over the summer. Such a short summer. They had the longer summer. It's been brought up by multiple people already. There's been a chance to recharge. Everything about this feels different than last year. An extension of that, too, in hearing Miles Wood and Ross Colton talk about the immediate feeling of that difference is pointing to the guys at the top. And one of those being Nathan McKinnon, who after group one, yeah. we had yeah. some idea that he was going to be coming yeah. straight Sneaking to grade two session. Two, yeah. He had a green jersey in his stall. I didn't, I didn't believe it at first. I didn't believe he was coming until I saw him out there in a green jersey doing line rushes with AHL guys. Yep. And he could have easily asked Riley Tufty to switch that blue jersey and <laughs> go out there with lack and inbound experience too. He's not above that, and I think there's definitely, I don't know if teaching's the right word for it, but... <laughs> they learned a lesson They one definitely way or learned a lesson <laughs> in just being in proximity to Nathan McKinnon, and I think it's really important for that group, too, and it also is a reflection of who Nathan McKinnon is, but it's of no surprise to us that he is that player yep. that comes straight from Halifax and joins group two. This is such an amazing point, because day one of training camp, he's here. He leaves a little bit early before his session ends. He flies to Nova Scotia, goes to Halifax, gets his jersey retired. This is like an all-time like great accomplishment for a guy, right? Gets on a plane, flies all the way back, and joins the second session on the third day of training camp. And he skates in between Dalton Smith and DJ Buzdecker. He doesn't have to do that, but he does. Yep. Because that's the level of dedication. And when you see Nathan McKinnon doing that, you know, I'm, I'm not sure where Peter Holland was today because he also had a team excused after absence. I'm not sure. His wife had a baby. That well, is incredible. Congrats to them. A great, a great reason to miss. He'll be yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. No, it, was, it was very vague. Nathan McKinnon, make that effort. Top to bottom in your organization, everybody sees yep. that. Yep. It's everybody. You think you think Dalton Smith's eyes didn't get like this big when that dude comes rolling out in a green jersey? <laughs> it's that's culture. Your heart rate goes up. A little yeah, bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, on that note, if someone is acting like Andrew Cogliano on the roads and trying to run through you, <laughs> you might need Bogus and Shanker. Call two 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 today. One. To get a hold of them, uh, they're they're just looking out for you. If you've been in a car accident, a rideshare situation, if you got hurt at work, they just want to get you what you deserve. When you call them at the two number or go to coloradolaw.net, they'll give you a free consultation. If they think you have a case, they will take it on for nothing up front. You pay these guys nothing until you win your. They've won over a billion dollars for since they've been doing this for over 25 years. Uh, also brought to you by Shady Rays. You can go get yours at ShadyRays.com. Use the DNVR code. When you get two or more pairs of sunglasses, you'll get 50% off your entire order. They've been given five stars by over 250,000 people. The same way we're giving the Avs five stars for this training camp. Uh, ShadyRays.com. Check them out today. 
I think we're going to wrap this one up pretty quickly here because tomorrow we'll have an actual game to talk about. There's no more practice, no more drills, actual game situations to break down for some of these guys and uh, have conversations about who looked good and who did what well. So we will be back tomorrow afternoon, evening, one, games at 1 p.m. So we will have a post game coming your guys' way. Keep your eyes out for that. Other than that, we appreciate y'all following along with us for all of our training camp coverage. A lot more content to come. So stick with us, and we will talk to you on the next one.